TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. Spinner. Welcome to Notebook, your guide to art, culture and tourism here in Tokyo and throughout Japan. I'm Stuart Munro and around this time each Monday, Wednesday and Friday, I'll bring a selection of local news and views. On today's episode, we report on fire festivals and new films, but first, Okinawa. It's been announced this week that the United States will send a unit of marines to Okinawa, defensive islands in the remote southwestern Senkaku region. It will take several years before the deployments are in place, but their imminent presence there comes as China's own presence in the East China Sea intensifies. But the plans could trigger a backlash from locals. Roughly 70% of the island is already used exclusively for US installations. Tokyo and Washington are also keen to make a show of strength close to Taiwan, which Beijing regards as a breakaway province to be reunified with the mainland, by force if necessary. China has also been entering and re-entering Japanese waters around the Senkaku Islands in recent months. Islands controlled by Tokyo, but claimed by China. The Japanese government has pledged to strengthen its own forces on the island too, as part of its three key defense documents published last month, to defend what it called the greatest strategic challenge. And though not directly related, but no doubt aided by these moves, China has now suspended visas for Japanese travelers, as countries worldwide have all tightened the entry requirements for Chinese tourists. Staying with the sea, and the electronics manufacturer Fujitsu has teamed up with Tokai University's School of Marine Science and Technology to develop the world's first ultrasound AI tool for measuring the freshness of frozen tuna. Traditional tests require cutting the fish in two. Ultrasound does away with the knife altogether. And while cutting requires knowledge and skill, currently the reserve of experts, it's hoped this new process can be shared with other countries. And with the tool set to take several years before being ready, the team's also eyeing other applications for fish and livestock, as well as its potential use in medicine. Tuna's popularity has been on the up in recent years. The marketing research firm Global Information predicts the global tuna market will grow from just over $40 billion in 2021 to almost $50 billion by 2027. The Onisube Festival, one of Japan's biggest fire festivals, took place in the grounds of Dazaifu Temangu Shrine in Fukuoka last Sunday, on January the 8th. Set against the night sky, hundreds of locals gathered to welcome in a prosperous new year. The festival got underway at 8.30 that evening, with fire carried over bridges that span the Shinjike Pond in the heart of the temple grounds. The event is part performance and part ritual, with one team gathering at one end dressed in costume as man-eating giants, with another group protecting them gathered in front. Bundles of straw set alight and torches carried to fan their flames. The costume group, driven to the temple, are then smoked out and captured one by one as they flee. And the culminating haze of smoke and drama make for a mysterious and stirring display. With the smoke gone and flames extinguished, Festival goers pick up pieces of what's left of the scorched hall and return home, offering up charred pieces to protect their own homes from the threat of fire. The Onesube festival has been held ever since 986 and is ingrained in the local culture of Fukuoka. And as this part of rural Japan looks ahead, so too do others. Ahead of this October's International Documentary Film Festival in Yamagata, some three hours north of Tokyo, Screenings are taking place from this week onwards for anyone able to make it. Shinsuke Ogawa's Forest of Oppression from 1967 is being shown this Friday at the Yamagate Documentary Film Library there, and combines archive footage that chronicles the student barricades of that period. 
Takasaki City's University of Economics is the film's focus, where the struggle of universities in Japan in the late 60s is one of political ends. But Takasaki and Guma Prefecture pictures the vigour and violence of students in smaller, lesser known parts of the country, all bristling at events in Tokyo an hour away. Previous screenings this week on Monday included the 2008 German film Apollonov Kopia, shot in Ukraine's Sevastopol Bay, as well as the Swedish film Transnistria from 2019, which follows a young girl living in a country that lends the film its title, a country bordering both Ukraine and Moldova. Both films give a sense of what to expect later this year when the festival returns, the last of which was online in 2021, with the last in-person screenings held in 2019. Speaking of film, Hirokazu Koreida returns to screens this year. First is his latest offering titled The Makanai, Cooking for the Mica House, a Netflix series and live adaptation of Akio Koyama's hugely popular manga Kyo and Kyoto. His other project is the upcoming film Monster, and that's due to be released later this year. That's it for this episode of Notebook. Be sure to check in on Friday, January the 13th. If you enjoyed this or any of the episodes throughout 2022, you can rate us on Apple Podcasts or spread the word online. You can also email the Notebook team, notebook.podcast at gmail.com with thoughts for future episodes. Until next time though, thanks for listening. This has been Notebook.